Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us at IPA. I just want everyone to know that Catmull stole five of my minutes. And I'm just doing that. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, your time doesn't start until now. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so I'm okay. going to run the South Bank University. And I've come to this event, and I came, I went to the uh, subtech event last week with a, a very particular concrete agenda of how am I going to teach and encourage my colleagues to teach our students next year. And I think we're facing three crises. One is a crisis of the funding of higher education in the UK. We're not really allowed to charge our own students the cost of the course, and we're having to rethink how we deal with it. Two, there's the crisis in inverted commerce, regenerative AI, and is that the end of higher education because students can get the answers to the assessments that we get with a degree and the press of the button. Uh, and the third one is really a crisis of engagement. I'm sure it's different depending on where you live and how elite you and your students are. But at South Bank, I'm really worried that we've got students who have to work too many shifts to pay their bills, so they, they don't come to class. When they come to class, they haven't done reading. Uh, they don't read. You know, I grew up reading the book every week since I was at least 25. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, all my life, you know, I, I, I've read. People don't read, they watch. Um, and the, the impact of COVID it seems to be that a, a whole generation has suffered trauma, a real concrete trauma, and don't have self-confidence and self-worth are very anxious because they know that things can fall apart at any, at any moment. And never really got a chance to develop the ordinary social skills of working together in groups. So, so there are all sorts of obstacles. So I've come looking for answers. And so I am particularly speaking uh, to one of the problems that we're going to try and solve in our team tomorrow, which is about the new pedagogy for higher education technical advances. This is my magic finger. It's not working. Hold on, hold on. So I teach law and technology. I'm going to go through this uh, uh, very quickly, but it sets the context of what I'm thinking about now and why. Uh, we teach project management. We teach legal design. We teach uh, teamwork to a mixed group of law students and computer science students. And we are a teaching team of computer scientists and lawyers. Uh, we ask the students to work in groups to build access to justice prototypes for real clients. Um, the first assessment is a personal piece of work and it's coursework and we ask them to reflect on their experience, on their skills and on their career aspirations and to consider whether that to change. But the 70% the of the, the mark is a team mark, a, a group mark. Though we've had to develop a mechanism for dealing with the problem of the free rider. You know, the students really don't like the idea that someone might not show up for 12 weeks. And they, despite the job being part of them, getting a good mark in the other two visit. And I'm very happy to share details of how we do that because we're quite proud of it. Um, so we work for local charities, including up here we've got um, the Monitoring Group, which is a local police racism charity, though really they're a national, they have a standing. Um, and Access Social Care. I really encourage people to have a look at the chatbot that uh, Access Social Care have developed to support clients with learning difficulties, write letters to their local authority, asking for the uh, support that their uh, the care support that they're entitled to legally. And we also draw clients from our legal uh, advice clinic. So last year, Lucia, my colleague, and I, we began to see essays in the coursework. Well, it was probably written by uh, generative AI. So we spent the summer sort of playing with AI with different tools, putting our coursework in, adapting them, just to try and understand what students could and might do. And we developed a policy, which we've now persuaded the university and some others uh, to adopt, which um, 
we developed with the students, um, and it basically says we're not going to ban generative AI. We are going to teach you how to use it uh, responsibly um, and to understand its strengths and, and its weaknesses. We felt the universities were not really capable of successfully prosecuting everyone uh, who was suspected of using AI. We would do it badly, we would do it slowly, we would, we would do it unfairly. So despite the moral panic, we said, no, we are going to, going to allow you to use it. We're going to tell you how or the laws. The key thing that we did is we changed the, the marks with the marks within the envelope of the, uh, the rewards for the essay. Less, less marks for knowledge and um, more marks for footnoting. But it opens up this really interesting question of how do you know that is true? Which, of course, is as we approach the election, uh, we've just had one, well, it's a very important question socially. So we, we give the students some guidance as well, and we, we started we started teaching them. So we, we teach in class a little bit about ethics and AI, up to the social issues and down to can I can I cheat in my course? <laughs> <clears throat> we created this comic, which we're very very pleased with, as an uh, as an artifact for promoting discussion. And you, you we share the slides, and we have a blog. You also find the comic there if you want to to look at it. It's the rise and fall of the lawyer who adapts technology, Alex. You need to watch this. <laughs> um, the thing itself, you know, raises questions. What happens to the graphic designers when the idiots like me to make a comic? So there's a sort of question about who's going to benefit from these efficiencies of technology. And it brings in lots of other issues about using tech for access to justice, about confidentiality, about the rule of law and so on. So we've moved on, Lucina and I now, as we sort of improved our understanding of the capacity and potential of these tools. So thinking about how can we use generative AI for learning and teaching as part of this process of engaging with the students about teaching them how to use it effectively and efficiently and appropriately. So one of my projects is using Copilot to assist academic reading. Um, I've got, you know, it, my good students come to class without having done reading. My bad students don't come to class all day. Um, but I used to teach a course on medical law and ethics, and we would do one key ethical academic article a week. And the good students who've done the reading, they would tell me a hundred things they found along the way, but they couldn't tell me the main argument. It's a really, really high level skill. Okay? And I got interested in using Copilot because South Bank gives students access to Microsoft 365, so we all get Copilot. It's a reasonable thing. It's not every chat GPT4, it's not everyone's preferred tool, but it's good enough. And I've just been experimenting with asking it to summarize articles and then asking it questions. And that, I, I suddenly thought, I don't remember being taught to evaluate at university. I'm sure tutors will just, you know, look at you under dark eyebrows, but um, what I mean is, is we would read, discuss, hear what the tutor thought, go away and repeat. And then we, I don't remember a class where we said, well, what are the right questions to ask an author before you decide whether you're going to do what they say? And so I'm quite interested in this. But it also means I can build classes where the students come into the classroom, and instead of me saying, right, we've done the reading of everyone looking at their shoes, <laughs> and half of them not coming next week, then I want to go through that again. But we can say, right, okay, you know, we read it, tell us what to think, now let's go through it and use this tool to quickly come up with an understanding. And one of the things I want to explore with colleagues, you know, this conference is is that is that a disastrous coming down, or is it a way of teaching people who don't read how to read academic articles, and is it a, a preparing them for a future world? Oh. Go back, sorry, we've been done with us. Well, that's so one of our experiments has also been using custom GPT to create um, feedback on draft course works. And in this particular version, we really took every single line of the coursework instruction and guidance, turned it into a prompt. And we felt like we were getting better, more personalized feedback on a draft essay than if you just dropped your essay into 
And that's a very interesting step. It doesn't uh, answer the question for you, but it does give you good feedback on an early draft. Like you should give, you were asked to give three examples, you've only given two, maybe you should uh, like to develop that. I'm working on a project with colleagues in the UK on what's next for the whole model curriculum, what should we teach as well as how should we teach it. Um, so what I want, how I'm hoping we can explore at this conference really is what's left for law teachers and law students and how can we use these tools to engage students. And it raises questions about the value of knowledge. In the past, the professor knows everything, they flatten that into a lecture, they read it to you, you learn it off by heart, you put it into an exam, you pass, and you're ready to be a future professor. I don't think it's very functional. It's not very good for training lawyers. And it's certainly not working for our students. So I think they need less knowledge and an educational experience where they use knowledge and apply it. And that's what we've done in time. 